Thank you. Um, this is the part of the show where we play acoustic. And I try to figure out why my eye keeps watering. But I multitask. I do both at the same time. Don't worry. Uh, this is also the part of the show where I talk a little bit about this thing that we started like six years ago um, called the Tegan and Sarah Foundation. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I just tell, we're out right now touring, but we're also fundraising for the Tegan and Sarah Foundation. And, and tonight we're going to have a draw. And if you want to enter the draw, you can win a signed set list as well as a t shirt. And the bigger draw that'll happen at the end of this tour that you'll also be entered into is to win one of our electric guitars from this tour. And, and also, there's a second grand prize, which is a $1,000 shopping spree at this amazing uh, website, or you can go in the store, but this company called Wild Fang, and they're friends of ours, and yeah, it's a clear women-owned company. Anyway, all of these goodies, the reason why that we're giving them away is because um, we're trying to raise funds for the Tegan and Sarah Foundation. And I'll say this, we've had an amazing run with Tegan and Sarah Foundation. We're still in existence, we're still a really small, scrappy foundation that mostly funds grassroots, LGBTQ organizations that center women and girls, and trans people, and queer people of color. Basically, what the majority of the people that are kind of overlooked by the larger um, funders, which is not necessarily their fault, it's a system problem, but we don't want to get into that tonight, but um, we are really proud of the work that the Tegan and Sarah Foundation does, and. Um, it's really just so thrilling to be able to give back. This June was 25 years since we started our band, and through the course of, yeah, and through the course of that 25 years, we've seen things change so much, but we've also seen systematically like rights rolled back on a lot of, of the, most, um, the most vulnerable in our community, and our work with the Tegan and Sarah Foundation is to hold up those people and fund those people and um, fund research and fund things that support and help them. Basically, that's it. That's like the mission, so... Yeah, thank you. The good news... The good news is that you don't have to do what I'm going to ask you to do next. You do not have to do it. But every night, we've been having an amazing run. We've been raising thousands of dollars every night from amazing people just like you. So I hope tonight is the same. If you want to take out your cell phone and you want to enter to win a t-shirt and a set list for tonight or one of our guitars or this shopping spree, now is the time to take out your phone and you're going to text this number, 99126. The number is 99126. And you're going to text the word crybaby. Um, and by entering into this contest and helping the Tegan and Sarah Foundation, just know that I will think about you forever, every night before I go to bed. And I will... Imagine all of your faces, which I'm slowly memorizing over the course of this evening. And I will, I will funnel through them and think about what an amazing group of people we play to, to in Asheville, North Carolina, at the Orange Field. So take out your phone, text 99126. You're going to text the word crybaby. Please enter the contest. I hope you win tonight. I hope you win the big grand prize. I also just want to note that Sarah and I, we donate on your behalf. So even if you don't have the funds, don't worry about it. We donate a portion of your ticket every single night from every headline taken in Zara show since we started the foundation. So you can it. Um, but if you have a little extra, it's actually kind of shocking how far $5 will go. So I hope you'll enter the contest. I'll say it one more time. The number is 99126 and the word crybaby. Okay. Now I'll go back to just nonsense. Um, yeah. This song is off of an album called The Con. I don't know how the rumor got started. Maybe it was just when we were in the studio, but I remember you, there was sort of like, you kind of came out with saying that maybe you didn't really like this song that much. Uh, it wasn't a rumor. It's included, <laughs> it is included in the, uh, the digital footage captured from recording that album. It's, it's, it's Chorus Phone. It's me and you and our former guitar player, Ted, and. We are discussing whether or not I like Hop the Plane enough to keep it on the album, and I said I did. <laughs> and if it had been up to me, we probably would have cut this one. So, what can I say? Maybe I was wrong, maybe I was right. I don't know. Not every song. This is, I'm so curious for the people that are cheering, is it because you hate the song too? 
<laughs> Just keeping up. They're like, I, I feel like every audience is like one degree away from being like, kill Sarah, kill Sarah, kill Sarah. <laughs> It's that, it's that touch and go night to night. You know, I just, I'm just honest. Tegan's, Tegan's the puppy and she will lick your hand. And I'm a cat who's like, I'll touch you if I want to. And, um, and I'm, just being, I'm just being honest. I think it actually adds a lot of depth and texture to this band that not every song that people like or that ends up on an album is a choice that we both agreed on. And I just was voicing my uh, I was just voicing my opinion. I was probably, I was probably provoked. You probably said, go ahead, tell me one song. If you have to cut a song, which one would it be? And I said, pop a plane. And then for the fucking next 20 years, she's like, Sarah doesn't like it. <laughs> but I would have never, I wouldn't necessarily have volunteered it. She Do you feel me. like you like it more now? Jesus. Look, I think a bigger question would be, is the con still great without this song? I don't know. I think it's probably fine without this song. You think that the con would still be good even if this song wasn't on it? I, absolutely. Well, I disagree with you. You're making, you're making extended eye contact with me telling me you don't like the song by saying you understand what that means, right? By saying it, like, you're saying you'd still love it even if it wasn't on there. I see, I see. Okay. Because there was like eight people behind this person who were like, no, the album wouldn't be as good without this song. I'm just saying, it's like, who knows? Sometimes, I mean, I, 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 hey, look, I'm chill. <laughs> I'm super chill about it because we're still going to play this song. <laughs> so gonna, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, who has the power, you know? What's that? I missed what happened over there, but what did you say? It has the most angst on the on the record. It definitely has. You moments. think Humble Plane has more angst than Knife Going In? <laughs> well, like 19, when like Tegan's like, it's not 18, and then the drums are like. <laughs> I mean, this is just sort of like it's lighthearted, you know? This is the Olive Garden of the album. This is not, this is not a fucking lighthearted song. I can play this song. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. Okay, I think every song on that record is very intense. This is not a lighthearted song. If that's how anyone's been hearing it, then you're not listening. This is a very angsty, upset song. This is a song about, this is a song about going to the airport. This is a song about going to the airport to go see the girl that you've been talking to for hours and texting with for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and, weeks and, weeks and months and months and months. And then you get there and, she, you get, and she's like, you know what? No, don't come. And you're so mad that you write the song. That's angsty, that's very emo. This is the most emo song you've ever written in your entire career. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm not up here giving my like thesis doctorate to the audience telling people. I'm just saying, if you have to protest this much about the song and explain that much about it, maybe it's not that angsty. And it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just saying, I'm, and, I, and again, I'm just going to say this really, I'm just going to be completely honest. I'm not up here playing the acoustic section, playing one of my songs from the pod. Like, you win. I don't know. I don't, I'm just saying, you know, debate glove. Like, oh, I think the album went, actually. I think I'm happy. Really, right now, I'm handing the guitar. Why don't you play something off the con? Do you even know a song off of the con? <laughs> Back to where 